Hello and welcome to Kulttuurikauppila Art Center. We are at the artist residency in E now uh, with an artist talk with Zeynep Kainar. And we have an audience here, you behind your own screens there uh, around the world. Uh, we'll be aware that we have an audience, a nice little audience here in Kulttuurikauppila. Welcome and welcome Zeynep. Hello, thank you for joining us today. And you also thank you for joining us today behind the screen. Yeah. And I'm Jetta Huttunen, uh, the executive manager of Kulttuurikauppila Art Center, and we'll be interviewing Zeynep. Or we will be talking about her and her art uh, for some 20 minutes or so. Uh, uh, we are streaming live mm -hmm. on, <laughs> on the globe, on the internet. So very happy to have everybody on board. Um, let's start with a short presentation of you, Zeynep. So can you tell a little bit about yourself yeah. as an artist? Um, well, I'm an independent professional working with um, um, multiple tools. I cannot really say that I'm a painter or I'm a sculptor or I'm a... Um, Photographer, I usually use uh, the type of tools and I try to manipulate based on to the uh, type of inquiry I want to deal with, with the artwork. So in that sense, I am, um, I use multiple tools and um, I'm currently based in Tampere. So I live and work in Tampere. Mm -hmm while at the same time studying educational sciences at the Tampere University. Um, that's pretty much it with the basic information about <laughs> me. Yeah. And you are originally from Turkey? Yes, I am originally from Turkey. Mm. And tell about us a little bit about your education. So what did you do before you uh, became uh, a, a, a student at the Tampere University. Okay. You've been studying uh, various things. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's originally I'm, I've been studying a, a studio practice at, in, in Istanbul at Sabancı University. Um, I've studied my bachelor's there and half of my master's degree in Istanbul and half of it I have went to USA in um, University of California as a graduate student. And I've been participating in studio classes there. So originally speaking, I've studied uh, fine arts, um, mm -hmm. visual arts and visual communication design bachelor's and master's degree. Later on, I've, um, I've worked in the industry in Istanbul. Um, my master's degree was focusing on um, bookmaking, photo book mm -hmm. and art bookmaking specifically. Later on, I've started working in the publishing industry and printing industry, focusing on artistic uh, books and photo books for two years. And in the meanwhile, I've been um, I've been participating in uh, classes at the university, and throughout my master's degree, I've worked as an assistant to teach at mm -hmm. the university. And then um, this is when I happen to realize that I have a interest in um, pedagogical work uh, after having been hired with, by the Contemporary Art Museum Artash in Istanbul. And I worked at the museum, um, I think a year, mm -hmm. a year and a half or something like that. I worked under the education department. And then this is when I happened to realize that my, I have been interested in informal ways of educational work. And then this this is what brought me to Finland. I wanted to develop further pedagogical competency. I wanted to work in educational sciences on top of my artistic career. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. And uh, it, of course, we are really proud of our educational system in Finland. And you are kind of living proof that it does 
uh, lure people from. Uh, it's a well-known fact that we have a really good educational system, yeah. and we uh, the the research educational research in our universities is top class. And and but it's really great. Uh, I've uh, Nico, talked to you a lot about how you combine. Uh, this educational interest and your art, your art making, your art making processes. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned books, which leads us to letters <laughs> and language. Yeah. So maybe you could uh, open up a little bit how language and letters and, for example, alphabet Mm. Uh, play a role in your artistic process? Yeah, of course. Um, when, I, when I first started working in um, art in book format, specifically focusing on artistic book production and photo book making, um, design was a huge element, of course, together with how to display artworks in such an intimate Mm -hmm. uh, Safir. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I've been paying a lot of attention to to typefaces. I've been paying a lot of attention how to place things on the on the surface of the paper and and how to experience them. Yeah. In that sense, I had this interest to typographic design and how does it match with uh, the visual messages that were depicted in the in the artistic works, of course. So we have always been having this balance on mm -hmm. the surface of the paper. And this became, in a way, for me, aside from like studying artistic work and visual language and even mm -hmm. working on the teaching environment in that sense, I became more interested in uh, to understand the, the value of, of the letters and writing from the perspective of the visual value rather than how we perceive them as language and written language. So this is when I started to study um, different alphabetical systems. Mm -hmm. So I started basically trying to understand uh, different forms of um, alphabetical systems ranging from Chinese to Latin alphabet and Kerala alphabet. So all these systems were somehow interesting for me to study in the sense that how they are visually represented mm. and how they were visually produced. So from that uh, interest comes my uh, interest to abstract visual language because um, to me abstract visual language when I have been studying at the university focusing on contemporary uh, history of artistic works it was always very very alienating for me to understand contemporary artwork, mm. understand um, abstract artistic work but then through familiarizing myself with artistic history of contemporary art and contemporary painting, then I happened to realize that I've been developing a sense of understanding how to look at this type of artworks. And then to me, that is almost like a similar feeling of learning a language from scratch. Mm. So for me, it was trying to understand the visual language that was composed on the artworks from the history while at the same time trying to combine and finding ways to translate this language mm -hmm. and have this experience of learning it from scratch mm -hmm. because now that I I've started this series of artworks in 2018 so so I started this uh, with an attitude of like artistic research. And then it developed into, uh, it combined my interest for learning theories that I have been acquiring in Tampere University. And uh, all these came together in the form of uh, designing my own alphabet. And using those alphabets, I have been lately working on this series of artworks, one sample we have here and one sample we have here, mm. to basically um, stitch meanings of uh, abstract artistic work and to understand, to make a meaning, if we can learn this uh, language and if we can imitate the ways of learning a language while we are looking at and trying to understand visual work. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's really interesting. And in a way, you are at the core of uh, artistic uh, process because what people, when they first started doing art, was, it was a kind of a me method to communicate. And we're kind of at the core of the art, of the question of what is art. Mm. Ningu, art is a language in mm. itself, and you are kind of researching that language, bringing the real languages into the systems. This is yeah. also really interesting that you've been uh, learning about the system, because languages are systems. They are in a way ningu, like arbitrary systems that somebody just ningu, decided that, okay, let's have them like this, and these are our letters, and yeah. this is our alphabet, and, and when you look at ancient Egypt, they first started depicting what people were doing, what did it look like, and then it became a mark of a language and written text, yeah. so to speak. But uh, so the, the, it's really, really interesting to when you look at something you have been doing, for example, this artwork which you have been working on now here in E, and when you know all this, it kind of uh, open up this ningu, uh, ningu incredibly rich world of meanings in a way. And then also you've added, you also use these kind of, uh, um, you have the, the T, T uh, you are using imagery that is in the world. So you yeah. are all, all um, uh, doing these collages in a way also. The, bringing these different visual systems into your painting. So I think, I think it's, it's really fascinating. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. <laughs> and of course, um, like every systems of alphabets, they come from um, very basic ways of communicating, like gestures and body movements, before we know the language we speak today according to linguist, linguistic studies that mm. most of the languages and alphabetical systems comes from gestural shapes and how we communicate mm -hmm. is actually has to do with body movement. I actually also influenced from my own body movement while I was first um, coming up with the designs of the alphabet. Um, it was a way for me to understand and build a connection with, with my emotional state and and uh, my my movements while I'm asleep. So that is the reason why the, this is a, a process that is originated from the gestural movement from, from how I sleep in the bed. Mm. And I started to collect that data. I started to record myself. I started to um, analyze shapes after I wake up, uh, looking at the bed. So it's as, it, as in like all of the languages and how the idea of language has been developed, it also has connotations to my gestural movement mm. and um, a way of communicating and trying to make a meaning of that. Yeah. Yeah, and you do recognize that some of the images are like this bodily. They are images of you. You think of Ningu characters when you look at mm. them, like this is a character that you have uh, depicted, but they are so abstract that you can't really say that. Uh, is it a character? Is it a what is it? Uh, but they are Ningu. It's it's really interesting, and also the the kind of the bodily nature of painting altogether, because most painters do tell when they tell about their processes, they tell that it's a very, very uh, corporal and bodily experience, the whole making of art. For some people it is more, um, they, well, you can imagine if you do something like really big or, for example, if you're a sculpture or something like that, then your body really works, works, uh, you have to be like part of your material and, and so, things like that. So I think it's, it's uh, you can see the bodily process also in these paintings. Yeah. 
Yeah, I have been simplifying quite much about that because I have also been trying to make a consistency within the alphabetical system I came mm -hmm. up for these abstract artworks. Of course, it is possible to detect, as you have suggested, yeah. uh, a few uh, reminiscences of the bodily uh, traces. Mm -hmm. And of course, especially this is the first time I have ever worked uh, this big size. Uh, I have been make, making big paintings earlier, but specifically for this series, it was the first time uh, I did this big of a size uh, work. And I can confidently say that it resonates with <laughs> your your thinking in that sense yeah. that it your body behaves differently, and then new ideas also arise in the process. So yeah. that's why I, I call this series of paintings as a process, uh, sleeping as a uh, as a performative process, because uh, it originates from the the it considers the sleeping as a performative process but then mm. still as a language it keeps evolving as as i keep practicing it mm. yeah. and basically what i do in the studio uh, is the result of the that whole research process yeah yeah it's yeah fascinating <laughs> i'm glad <laughs> you're enjoying <laughs> Yeah, so you've been our March residency artist now here in E. How have you liked it here? Uh, has this been, has this brought something new to your work? What are the expressions, impressions that you have gotten from your northern Finland stay? Um, what I can say confidently, it is a very calm experience. Well, we have especially experienced with my husband since we had started living in Finland that it is it is such a calm country comparing what we have been and how we have been living in Istanbul. But I think E has a different, entirely different layer to it. Uh, here, when I came to the residency, I happened to had a um, very intense amount of time where I could spend uh, my time at the studio and focus on what type of things I want to do and like the plans that I want to implement throughout the future mm -hmm. of where this series will head to. And this also helped me um, understanding how I'm going to display them in Lahti as well. Yeah. So in that so sense, you have this exhibition coming yeah. up in Lahti. Yeah. And uh, this residency process overall, of course, it has been a pleasure to be able to meet and speak to a few artists visiting here and of course the audience that we will have conversations about the artworks mm. um, to me that was this only reason actually to to come and work in this studio and have other mm. people's eyes looking at it and letting me know what they see <laughs> yeah yeah so that is almost one of the best part of it yeah. because otherwise it's a very solo practice to me. be in the studio and everybody knows <laughs> everybody knows and and then you also landed here on the holiday week yeah. which was like, like totally it was there was nobody nowhere and and we were also away because we had some holiday days also so but you said that you enjoyed even that part of your stay i cannot complain <laughs> That's nice. No. Okay. Thank you, Zeynep. I it hope was this was explanatory. It was very and very nice talking to you, and I'm so happy that you have been able to come here and stay here, and and we'll uh, continue our discussion here at the studio. But for now, thanks for everybody, and see you.